This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Traditional American pickup brands better beware. According to a report from Korea, Hyundai and Kia want to quote unquote conquer the U.S. pickup truck market. It says that after tearing down a Tesla Cybertruck, the group decided to make trucks a priority. But they won't go after pure electric pickups. Instead, the plan is to build 50,000 range-extended electrics, or e-rev trucks a year, starting in 2029. Lending a little more validity to the story, at the end of last month, we reported that Auto Forecast Solutions says Kia will start making a pickup truck at the Hyundai Group's new assembly plant in Savannah, Georgia, in December of 2028, and Hyundai will move the Santa Cruz production to the same plant in 2029. So, the timelines line up, And while the report from Korea didn't say where the e-rev trucks will be built, it's highly unlikely that the automakers would want to deal with the 25% tariff that's slapped on all imported trucks coming into the U.S. Sean Fain did not enjoy the interview between former President Donald Trump and Elon Musk, so much so that the UAW filed a complaint with the National Labor Relations Board over comments Trump and Musk made during their conversation on Monday. The two talked about firing workers who go on strike, which the UAW says was a threat to intimidate workers. It's against the law to fire workers for going on strike, and threatening to do so is illegal under the National Labor Relations Act. However, The NLRB has limited power to punish those violations. Remember, the union filed a complaint with the NLRB against Mercedes back in May after it lost a vote to organize the automaker's plant in Alabama, claiming the election was unfair. It also filed complaints against GM, Stellantis, Hyundai, Honda, and VW. And so far, we haven't heard anything about any of those. So we think this new complaint by the UAW will probably go nowhere. Are Chinese automakers coming out with new models too quickly? Some of Zeker's customers sure think so. In the last 12 months, Zeker launched three new versions of its 001 sedan. It's not that the body styling changed that much. It's that the batteries, motors, and intelligent driving systems were upgraded. In February, the 001 got CATL's newest batteries and an 800-volt electric system. Earlier versions of the 001 have chips from Mobileye, while the newest ones come from NVIDIA, and they have longer-range LiDAR, giving them more autonomy and safety capabilities. In other words, the older cars can't be upgraded with over-the-air updates. Car News China reports that this upset customers who bought the earlier versions of the car. And no wonder. These updates in a way obsoleted their cars and will hurt their resale value. Because having the latest electronic features is extremely important to Chinese consumers. And let's stay with Zeker for a moment. Because yesterday, it came out with the 2025 version of its 007 sedan that uses a 75 kilowatt hour LFP battery that can be charged from 20 to 80% in just over 10 minutes. Zeker developed the battery itself and says it can charge faster than an NMC battery. And speaking of EV batteries, South Korea is thinking of asking automakers to publicly divulge who made the batteries in their electric cars. This was prompted by a Mercedes-Benz EQE battery fire that started in an underground garage in Seoul that destroyed 40 cars, damaged 100 others, and took eight hours to put out. The buildings above the garage also lost power and hundreds of residents had to evacuate. Then it turned out that the Mercedes had a battery pack from a Chinese company that most people have never heard of, Ferrisys. And two years ago, SAIC had to recall 32,000 EVs with Ferrisys batteries because they could catch fire. So now Hyundai, Kia, BMW, and Mercedes are posting who makes their batteries on their Korean websites. Intrepid's NeoVi Pi, allowing automotive engineers to interface, capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. 
The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments, allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi 4 compute while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. That makes the NeoVi Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems, yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software defined vehicles. EV charging satisfaction is improving thanks to Tesla opening up its supercharger network to non-Tesla vehicles. According to J.D. Power's U.S. Electric Vehicle Experience Public Charging Study, satisfaction with public EV chargers grew in the first half of the year compared to a year ago, and it's the first time the experience improved for two consecutive quarters since J.D. Power launched the study four years ago. Non-Tesla owners using Tesla's network reported higher levels of satisfaction than with other public charging networks. However, at the same time, Tesla owners are reporting a slight decline in satisfaction due to more EVs using the supercharger network. Other factors that helped improve the charging experience were charging companies fixing and expanding their networks. But charging reliability is still an issue with 19% of public charging attempts failing because the charger was out of service or just didn't work. Chinese autonomous tech company WeRide may have picked the wrong time to expand in the U.S. It's been operating self-driving test vehicles in California since 2021, accumulating over 42,000 miles last year. But it recently received permits from California to add passengers to its tests and to give rides with or without a backup driver. WeRide also announced last week that it's planning to do an IPO in the U.S. with a potential $5 billion value. But all this could go nowhere because the Commerce Department is expected to propose a new rule in the next couple of weeks that will ban Level 3 and higher autonomous vehicles that use Chinese software, as well as connected cars that use Chinese-developed wireless communication. It's all about national security. But WeRide does have a few things going in its favor. It's been operating in the U.S. for years. It's still only doing tests. The rides won't be open to the public, and it can't charge passengers. Even so, it will still be interesting to see how this all turns out. The U.S. and Europe may not have access to enough minerals to meet demand for EV batteries. A study by the International Energy Agency says that at the current pace of production, only 70% of global demand for copper and 50% for lithium will be met by 2035. The University of Michigan and Cornell also released a study that says there isn't enough copper to meet future demand. The slowdown in EV sales has eased supplies and caused prices to drop, but that's expected to be short-lived with EV production forecasted to grow later in the decade. Battery mineral supplies will also be further constrained because the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act restricts where materials can come from. Battery recycling could also help, but that business isn't expected to be fully up and running for another decade or so. In order to meet future demand, the IEA says $800 million in new mining investment is needed around the world by 2040. Even with generous incentives, EV prices actually went up last month and are only down slightly year over year. The average transaction price for an EV in July was just over $56,500, down 1.5% from 2023, but still over $8,000 more than the industry average. Plus, the incentive packages offered on new EVs last month averaged more than 12% of the price, which is nearly double last year and the highest level in three years. And when compared to the industry average, EV incentives were 74% higher. But despite all that, many experts believe EV prices will come down quickly because more lower price models are coming into the market and lithium, a key ingredient in batteries, has seen prices drop sharply. Nature can be a great inspiration for trying to solve engineering problems. 
So when the engineers at Mala wanted to reduce the noise of cooling fans in EVs and fuel cell cars, they studied the wings of owls. And that's because owls make almost no noise when flying or gliding. So Mala put little ridges on the edges of the fan blades that mimic the trailing edges of an owl's wing. It says this cuts the fan noise by four decibels, which actually cuts the noise in half. And better still, the fan is 10% more efficient and 10% lighter than conventional ones. While you might not think about it, EVs use cooling fans to keep the battery and power electronics at the proper temperature. And with that, we wrap up today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering boost your game. MEDC, where Michigan businesses are powering the future of mobility. And by Tajan Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. Keeping your heart racing in and out of the gym. That's what really matters. Bridgestone Potenza Sport AS Tires, with a 50,000 mile limited warranty. When we did our research for the talent that we need for this program, Michigan was really the top of the list. In order to be successful in this space, you really have to have the right people, the right mindset, the right environment. There's nothing wrong with heavy metal. Hey, lighten up. But with world-class composite material, Tajin Automotive Technologies makes vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly. 